let's start. Um, we're going to be talking about some new initiatives we have in terms of a re-enrollment processes changing, starting from the 2011-90 session, that's November 2011, and the new tool that we're using to support the new um, process. I'm going to step you through that. This presentation uh, works through the process quite in detail. There are a number of slides that do have a lot of detail on them. I probably won't spend time talking about that because you can read it during the presentation or when you review this yourself. This presentation is meant to be something that you can read and uh, understand yourself as you go through. This is aimed primarily at the students, but the course coordinators will also uh, be responsible for this information. Again, I'm probably not going to spend too much time on these slides here because you can read it, but we are implementing this new system. It focuses on um, completing students' courses within the appropriate time frame, within their student visas, and that's the key part of it. And this particular presentation uses a lot of build slides, animations, and so uh, if you print it, it's not quite as effective as running it online. So in this presentation, I will cover a background to why we're actually bringing about this change very briefly. Uh, the new tool that we'll be developing, that will be the most of the talk, as well as how you actually go about submitting your um, plan and your enrolment information. It will also, um, how you access additional help if you need further help beyond this presentation. There's a lot of details here, I don't want to go into it. This is the rationale for why the process has been changed. Effectively, it's to move one step towards online enrolment, to provide the appropriate tools for students. I'll let you read that yourself and you'll be able to understand the main aspects of those, why we're doing this. The key aspect of this though is the development of a new tool. Now the name of this new tool is Subject Selection and Planning Tool. And as I say, the main part of this presentation is understanding how to use that tool. Okay? This doesn't replace advice that will be available through your course coordinator. The course coordinator will be available at a number of sessions for you to come. We're calling these drop-in sessions or enrollment drop-in sessions. I'll cover a little bit of that as we go through as well. Okay, so this new subject selection and planning tool combines a whole lot of information that we, we need. It combines course structure, subject offerings, that means which semesters a subject is offered in. It provides subject sequencing, we often know that as prerequisites or assumed knowledge. Which subject should you take first, which subject should you take later on, which one do you have to take before another, very, very important. Um, suggested electives for the course that you might want to look at and also other valuable um, course planning information. What the aim of this tool is to basically distill all of the information and knowledge that is needed to do effective course planning. That's the aim. This is the first look at the tool. The tool is a, is a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet is broken up into various zones. I'm going to go through what the zones are. First of all, there over the left hand side of the sheet is the <coughs> courses that you will need to take, the compulsory courses, through your course. They might be classified as core or foundation or something like that, or they'll be classified as elective. If a subject is listed with a code, that is a compulsory subject you must take. Any blanks would represent electives. That's course structure. Prerequisites give rise to sequence. Now one of the special things about this particular tool is that we've ordered the sequence in the suggested sequence that you should take the subjects. So you should take the subjects listed up the top first, going down to the bottom. If you take them in that order, then all the subjects will, you'll, 
all the prerequisites will be satisfied. So that leads to subject sequencing. Over the right hand side with all the stars is when a subject is offered. In this particular version of, the, of this tool, a star represents the semester in which that subject will run within the study centre at Sydney. And so you should obviously take a subject when it's offered. And so by combining the structure, the sequence and the offerings, you can create your plan. The tool will help you do that. So each course will have a, its own tool. It will have its own subject selection and planning tool. So there'll be one for Bachelor of Business Accounting, there'll be one for Bachelor of IT, Network Engineering. So each course you're on and each sub-major within IT will have its own plan. So you'll use the right plan to plan your course. The student needs to enter particular information such as their COE start date, COE end date and other things like that. They will also need to enter information from their transcript, basically those subjects that they have uh, as credit and those subjects they have passed and those subjects that uh, they're undertaking at present. We'll go through that in more detail. The plan um, is then created that works you through to complete your course on time. Finally, when you've created your plan, you'll submit that plan to your course coordinator via a particular email box that we will I'll discuss later on. That will then be reviewed by the course coordinator to determine validity and if it's not valid, you will get a return email asking you to fix up the problems. The plan is updated each session. So to keep it current and keep, keep it accurate. So this is a process that you will do as a student every semester, you'll update it. Also, if you've actually enrolled into a subject, you've completed the, the plan and you've completed your enrolment, you can change your enrolment like you've done in the past in terms of a uh, change of enrolment form. However, every time you change, you will need to provide a new and valid plan as well. So the following slides step through how to use this tool to do effective planning. We will also be supporting the planning uh, tool with drop-in sessions, with a CSU Interact site for re-enrolments and also notices on the notice board. You can read through there the things that we will be looking at doing. So let's look through the spreadsheet, what you need to enter. The first few things are quite straightforward. If there are, if there are multiple courses at the top, Bachelor of Business Accounting, maybe it's got an associate degree leading to the Bachelor of Business Accounting, you need to select that. If there's only one course there, then you really don't need to select it. It might be something like the MIT, there's only one version of the MIT at this point in time. So if, it's, if there are multiple courses listed in the top two or three rows, you need to select that. The next thing you need to enter is just your student number, pretty obvious. The key thing here is the ECOE dates. Every international student is issued with an ECOE date, the start of their course, the end of the course. These are critical dates. As a student, you must be aware of these. If you really aren't aware of these, we will be putting notices up on the board of how to obtain these, uh, and they ultimately can be obtained through the registrar. But you should know these, they're important information, and you have to keep this. And then we move on to entering your history into the planner. There are three aspects to history. There's basically the subjects that you've got credited, the subjects that you're currently undertaking, and also there may be unresolved grades like A, uh, AEs, A, A's, and so on. We have to handle those. 
So this slide works through how to start to enter in the subjects that you have a result on your transcript. So what we're doing here is translating the information from your transcript and putting it against each one of the rows that correspond in the table. Okay, so we have to enter the credits. That's TCRs or FCRs. If you look down the bottom in the red, I define precisely what is what the mean meant by credits. Also passing grades, pass credit distinction, high distinctions. Also unresolved grades go in here. Defined out, defined all what unresolved grades were. And actually you'll see that star, 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 for the purpose of this tool, is treated as an unresolved grade because you don't, you're studying it, you don't know whether you're going to complete that at this point in time. The key point here is that AWs, FWs, and FLs do not appear in this plan at all. So they're ignored. So if you have actually been granted credit, you've got a credit letter, but they're not on your transcript, you need to come and see the CSU administrators to ensure that that information gets onto your transcript before you go a step further. If you believe you can have some credits that you haven't applied for yet, you need to get those resolved as quickly as possible. As a current student, you need to have those resolved before you can do your planning. So you need to submit all the information that you have to the registrar um, to actually make the submission. In this particular case, if you do have a strong case, you've talked about it, you might want to put the word pending in the results column. But make sure you add a comment. There's a student comments field. Make sure you complete that as well. Your course coordinator needs to know what you have submitted for credit. So once you've got your results in, you will be highlighting those we highlight them using the background function in Excel, background highlight of green. In two columns you would do that in, in the results column, but also the subject codes column. You'll find this color coding just makes it easier to track through the tool. So the question becomes, what if you've got unspecified credit on your transcript? And the majority of students probably studying do have unspecified credit. So this is how to handle that. That will appear as either unspecified credit or it doesn't look like a normal subject. Or indeed, it basically doesn't match a subject listed in your subject codes for that particular course which are compulsory. So what you need to do is translate that and put that against the appropriate subjects. Or in all cases, the unspecified credits or subjects that are there that aren't listed will have to go against your electives. Okay? In this particular case, this student has BUS 10C. This is a 16 credit point subject. All the slots in the tool are 8 credit point slots. And so you basically fill up two slots with that code. Okay, you can see that there. There's another case in this particular one as well. The student has BUS 21C, 16 credit points, so again, two slots being used in the tool. So to recap, if you have unspecified credits, effectively you divide it by eight to get the number of slots that you will use and put those against your electives. Working on your transcript, you have your current subjects. The current subjects appear as star, star, star. We've put them into the results and the subject code columns. Just to highlight those with blue, put the stars in. One of the 
key things that you need to do as an international student is complete your course within the appropriate duration that is listed on your ECOE. So what you need to do is take your ECOE date and figure out what session that ends in or which session it covers and what your last session is. That's a critical part. So if you finished in July, if you've got an ECOE to July, you'll finish in June, so you'll be finishing in the 30 session and so on and so forth. You would then highlight that ending session in this tool. What we'll start to do now is start doing planning. We've got all the information in there for about the credits. We've got information about what we're studying. We're starting planning the future. Basically, the plan starts at the top and works its way down to the bottom. You'll find you get more or less a diagonal effect when you do this in the plan. So the subjects that you wish to take in a particular semester, in this case 2011-90, the student would select those and for each subject that you wish to select and take, you would highlight three different cells, one in the subject code, one in the results code, and one in the 2011-90 code. Again this, again, this colouring is all to make it easier as we go down through this quite complex tool, but because it's colour coded it makes it easier. We then keep on going. After we've picked the two subjects that we'll be studying in 2011-90, which are directly going to be our next semester, our important one, we're going to have to do something more with those. We're going to have to fill out an enrolment form for those as well. However, so we keep on processing. Effectively, what you do is you look in the next column and find out what is the next subject that I need to take that is offered. And you work your way down through the plan. So in this case, the student is selecting these three subjects. So this student, in 2012-30, trying to plan, really in the sequence, should take Eco 120. However, Eco 120 is not, not available, so all the student does in the tool is skip down to the next subject. The next subject they need to take is ACC 222. They would take that subject and continue from there. The one thing you have to be careful of as you select your subjects is prerequisites. If you travel down from the top to the bottom, the prerequisites should be Okay, if you start skipping, you have to be very careful that the subject you nominate is taken after you have taken the prerequisite subject. So that's a, a little bit of a complexity, it's something you need to check. But if you follow from top to bottom and don't deviate from the sequence, all the pre prerequisites will be handled. Just a few notes for us, just to say the 30 means February to June. 60 July to October, 90 November to February, we should all know that. Also, what's very important is the number of subjects you must take. In the major sessions, in the 30 and 60 sessions, you must take a minimum of three subjects, but normally you would take four. In the summer, you can take either zero or the way up to four subjects. It's more optional but you still must complete your course by the required duration. And this is explaining intervention. Workload of taking three or four of the main sessions assumes you can finish on time and you're not under intervention. You can read this, but effectively what it says, if you're under intervention and you wish to have your workload reduced, you need to discuss this and have it approved with your course coordinator. You can read through the details there. The other thing is about the 90 session, the summer session. There are some special things about this session. I said before, you can take between naught and four. Well, if you take naught, that means you're not studying. That is okay 
as long as you're studying in the 30 and the 60 session, and as long as you're completing your course on time, that's not a problem. So what that means, if you're not studying, you have a holiday. The beauty of that is you can work unlimited hours, you can travel, you can relax, you can do whatever you want. You're not regarded as a student over that period of time that is studying. However, if you take one subject or more in the summer, you are a full-time student, deemed to be a full-time student, and all other restrictions uh, apply, such as working for 20 hours maximum. So we continue planning on. At this point, um, we're going to pick other subjects for the 2012-60. This, stu this student decides to pick four subjects, working their way down through the next available subjects. One th tricky thing is if there are subject substitutions which haven't been approved in your course, or you need to have approved in your course. Now there are some standard subject substitutions. MGT 110 replacing ITC 105 in a Bachelor of Business Management. There are some other standard ones. I've listed a couple here of ones that are important. Each one of these though must be approved by your course coordinator. And this, if you do have a approved subject substitution, you need to note that on your plan, that it has been agreed and it is available and you'll be taking a different subject than listed. So you can read through some of that information as well. So at some point a student will have to take an elective, usually, in their course. This student elects to take the elective in 2012-90. What, what they do then is they look at the selected number or the table below and they decide what subject is on offer in that period of time. It's a subject that's not in their course. If they've done the prerequisites, they can then take that subject and it becomes their elective. So what you need to do in the tool is to then Write down the code of that elective in the column of the, the subject code column, highlight it, and that becomes your chosen elective in that session. Moving on, this student finally selects his last three subjects. And so, the key thing once you think you've done your full planning is to double check your last session that you have assigned a subject to and make sure this fits either on or before when you're supposed to finish. If it doesn't, you have an invalid plan. You will need to see your coordinators at the drop-in sessions and it's likely you'll have to have your ECOE extended. The other thing you need to do before you finalise this is just check the subjects you have chosen for the next session, you need to check the timetable, just in case those occur at the same time. Now I think it would be unlikely, but occasionally it occurs. So double check the timetable and note the times of the two subjects that, that you have chosen. You only need to do this for the next session, which you're going to do the enrolment form into. If you discover clashes, then you need to replan. If you can't replan, come to a drop in session and the coordinators will help you replan. This particular student had two choices, or had a few choices, just to show you there are different ways to solve the plan. This particular student could have chosen to do their elective back in 2012-30. That would give them four subjects there. That would give them the summer off. That flexibility is with the student to make that decision whether or not they wish to study at a higher four subjects in the main sessions to get a summer off, or to study three in the main sessions and study the summer. This student chose to 
to study over the summer to balance their workload across the year. The next step is that you must complete what's called a re-enrolment form. This re-enrolment re form is just another tab in the subject planning, subject selection and planning tool. It's similar to what students have done previously. You basically nominate the code, the name. You also put the time of the class in there. One other important point is if there are multiple classes for a particular subject, MGT 100, run at different times. If there are different tutorials, run at different times. MGT 210 is run at two different tutorials at different times. You must register using the Enrollment Interact site under a sign-up sheet into one of those particular um, tutorials or classes. If you don't, you may be given a tutorial which is not particularly attractive to you in terms of its time. One thing that you'll need to submit as well is your transcript. Simply cut and paste this from the CSU transcript that you can get online. Cut and paste the Cut and paste the line from session, subject code, etc. down to the bottom of the transcript and paste that in to the transcript tab in the SSPT file. So once you've completed the plan, once you've done your re-enrollment form, you submit this, uh, or you need to do one more thing before you submit, you need to run and do the student experience survey. We run this every session, it's the same as what we've done before. You need to run that from the link that's shown here. It's a series of questions that we get feedback from the students on and we act upon. And what you would do then is maintain or retain the receipt. And your response, which is include your plan, your enrolment form and this particular receipt is sent through um, to an email address, I'll show you who to send it to um, shortly. Okay? If your email address that you're sending your enrolment forms and your plan from is not correct or not what we have listed, you need to update that. You can update your email address um, via an email drop, addresses dc at studygroup.com. Here are the email addresses that each particular course will submit their plan and their receipt to. A simple email saying here's my plan, my enrollment form and my receipt is all we need to do. If that is valid then this enrollment will go onto Banner. We will maintain a copy of the record. You should maintain a copy of your plan. It's very very important you do that. And also, um, um, as I enrol you onto the CSU student record system. If it's invalid, your course coordinator will contact you by a response email. We've also set up an Interact site to support the re enrollment process. This is actually where you'll find documents such as the timetable your templates for the um, SSPT, the tool, um, and other information such as calendars, a feedback mechanism, and also the sign-up sheets for the tutorials and split classes. Throughout this, the process is fairly stepwise. It's not complex, but it's not trivial. We're hoping that you'll all be able to do the planning by yourself. If you need any help, if you don't know how to satisfy some uh, plan, make sure you go back through this presentation again, understand the steps, follow the steps, but if you're still having problems, come to one of the drop-in sessions. You can register for a drop-in session uh, via the sign-in sheets on the Interact site. We are interested in feedback on this particular process. There is a feedback survey within the Interact site, so you can do, again, that's anonymous. 
or if you wish, you can send it directly to uh, Lee Kennedy Davidson.